St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday, and the readings are about God's great mercy for us. I invite you to please stand and face the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in this Easter season, when we celebrate Christ's victory over death through his glorious resurrection, we also celebrate the newness of life that is ours through our union with him through the sacrament of baptism. So together, let us now pray in thanksgiving for the waters blessed at the great Easter vigil, which soon will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless us with this sacred water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through it you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the river Jordan, you have renewed our nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of the Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were do done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever believed in the Lord. Great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out, of, out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting.
a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them, when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
receive the Holy Spirit. That is what Jesus says to his disciples in the gospel for this weekend, the weekend of divine mercy. Receive the Holy Spirit. To receive something, or in this case, someone, is no passive activity. It is not simply something that happens to us, but rather something that requires readiness, openness, and courage. As most of you know, I spend much of my time in the spring and summer coaching softball. And so during this time of year, I tend to process information through that lens. And the best softball analogy that I could identify in connection with this week's readings is what is perhaps the second most terrifying experience for young players, the pop fly. Go to any baseball or softball practice that is working on pop flies, and most coaches will instruct their players that they first need to be in a ready position, with their knees bent, their weight on the balls of their feet, focused on the batter, and ready to react when the ball is hit. It is not uncommon, however, particularly in those long games, to look in the outfield and see players with straight and locked knees, the glove under their armpit, eyes focused somewhere else. And yet younger players will sometimes even go out into the field without a glove. Where's your glove? So that's what we have. And players in that position will very much struggle to catch a pop fly. They are not ready. But those who are ready, who have taken the first and perhaps most important step in catching a pop fly, are in fact ready at every pitch. So once the player is in that ready position, the next instruction often relates to the first movement that the player makes if a ball is hit in their gener general direction. Players are taught that their first step is always a step backwards. And we step backwards for a few reasons. First, the player will be in a better position to keep the ball in front of them. A ball over the head virtually guarantees a double or more for the batter, but if the fielder can keep the ball in front, then a well-hit ball can keep a runner at first base. Second, stepping back allows the player to more easily see the ball and thus make it easier to catch it. When it is in front of you, it's easier to see than when you're running away from it and looking over your shoulder. Take that first step back. Now, after that, the player must put herself in a position to catch the ball. Now, other than that one scene in Sandlot where Benny the Jet tells the inexperienced Scotty Smalls to just hold his glove up, only then to have Benny hit the ball directly into that glove, most pop flies don't work that way. The player actually has to move. They have to put themselves under the ball. Now, this concept takes a bit longer to take hold in the minds and hearts of young ball players because I don't know how many times I have watched a fly ball dropped directly between two outfielders, both of whom standing in exactly the same spot they were when the pitch was thrown, and both of them looking at each other, wondering why the other one didn't go and get it. Looks like this. see that a lot. But an even more common experience than that are the pop flies that have this tremendous effect because girls who can sprint when it's time to get a water break all of a sudden start running as fast as I can, which is not fast at all, when a pop fly is hit in their general direction. I think part of that is they would rather have the ball drop in front of them than to put themselves underneath it miss it or get hit by the ball. They were afraid to put themselves at risk by putting themselves in a position to catch the ball. But if it just drops in front of them, well, that's, that's more acceptable. So players who are ready, who recognize when they need to move themselves into a new position to catch a ball, and who display the courage they need to give everything they've got to put themselves under the ball, are the players who become proficient at catching, at receiving, if you will, fly balls. Now, similar lessons might be beneficial when it comes to receiving the Holy Spirit. And let's start with the readiness concept. As human beings called into life by our Creator, we are all on the playing field of life. So are we standing out there without a glove? Or with our eyes focused somewhere else? Or with our posture oriented away from the game at hand towards something else? 
The dogmatic constitution on the sacred liturgy calls us as Catholics to worship, and I would submit live, with proper dispositions of our minds and hearts to celebrate and receive the sacraments wholeheartedly with a singular focus on active participation in the sacrament we celebrate. A focus that extends to our daily lives of prayer, our spiritual reading, our acts of service. A focus that calls us to prepare for Mass by contemplating the readings we will hear before they are proclaimed at Mass. That is readiness. We also need to take a step back. And taking that step back can also help us receive the Holy Spirit. If we find ourselves in our lives where God is not in front of us, if in other words we have become so focused on the things of this world that we can no longer see God, then we need to take that first step back where we can see God in whatever it is that we are doing. This may require many steps back, but it is only after we have done so that we will be able to see things a bit more clearly and then pursue the things of God as opposed to the things that made us blind to God in the first place. Taking a step back, keeping the things of God always in front of us and always as the object and the very purpose of our lives. And from there, from readiness to taking a step back, we must move. We must move toward the ball. We do not stay where we began our lives and we do not do the slow half trot toward the ball, being content with getting close, but never catching the ball. We move to where God is leading us. And we move there by committing ourselves to give everything we have to cooperate with God and putting ourselves underneath the ball that he has hit. And once we are there, we are then able to receive that ball, however difficult it may have been to get there, and however scary it might be to leave our current position to then occupy the place to which God calls us. And that can be scary. I have taken more than one fly ball off the noggin, and that definitely hurts. So there is that risk and that frustration that you will get hurt or that you might drop the ball. But there is also great joy when a young player catches that first pop fly in a game. The smiles on their faces from that one catch instantly dispel the fear and perhaps humiliation that they felt for the hundred pop flies that they had missed before. Now I have to confess to becoming exasperated at more than one practice when the girls simply couldn't catch anything. We would hit a few out there, they would drop every one or not appear to try, and then we would review the mechanics of catching a ball only to repeat the same results. But thankfully, when it comes to spiritual things, we have an infinitely better coach than me, a father in heaven who does not grow exasperated. We have a father who continues to love us even when we don't try, a love that does not fail, a love that, as St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans, was freely offered for us on the cross while we were yet sinners, a love that we understand as God's divine mercy. Mercy that when received gives way to the peace, peace that flows from the firm knowledge that God loves each and every one of us. Now we saw that mercy in peace just a week ago here in this sanctuary, on this altar and at that font. I watched in awe as each of our seven catechumens, dressed in what I can best describe as black graduation or choir gowns, these weren't becoming garments at, by any stretch, walked up these narrow set of steps, stood at the top of those steps, and for all to see, then entered that font, immersed themselves in water, and received the Holy Spirit, some approach that font with what might have been fear, but they all emerged with peace and with joy. Throughout the months of their preparations, they readied themselves. They took a step back from their lives as they previously lived them and embraced a perspective that made more room for God in their lives. And then they moved. 
They moved to the font for the catechumens. They moved to this altar for the first communicants. And there they received the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus commanded his disciples in our gospel reading. But that call to receive the Holy Spirit extends to each and every one of us. So let us be also ready. Let us also take a step back from the things that distract us from God, and let us all then move toward the path to which God calls us, a path by which we will indeed receive the Holy Spirit. Together as God's people, let us now stand as we profess our common faith by praying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let us now intercede for those who share with us the sufferings and the glory of the gospel and for the needs of our entire world. For the church, may we be transformed through our encounters with the living Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may war and terror yield to deeds of forgiveness and mercy, especially in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with doubts and fear, may Christ calm their fears, help someone accompany them, and touch their hearts with peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our service men and women, may their sacrifices lead to lasting peace, and may loved ones know God's consolation in their absence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newly initiated members of the faith, may they continue to grow in the Christian life and be patient with themselves as they begin this new part of their faith journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Tom Abel, Lisa Peterson, Tristan Voller, Jean Grenston, Dean Knudsen, John Murphy, Shannon Moulton, and Jeremy Stebbleton. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Margaret Helfrich. May the dead who acknowledge Jesus as their Lord and their God rejoice forever with the living one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Dale Sherman and the intentions of the St. Thomas the Apostle Parish family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, we come together to proclaim the living one, the first and the last who is dead but now is forever alive. Open our hearts to the spirit Jesus breathes upon us. Help us who have not seen to believe. Send us as you have sent Jesus to greet the world with the Easter word of peace and to share with all the spirit's new life of mercy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Our preparation song is number 182, Though Not Seeing You, number 182.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come 
we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and her husband, St. Joseph, and St. Thomas and the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 322 in the breaking of the bread, number 322. Two.
three zero.
I invite our Eucharistic ministers to the shut-ins this evening to please come forward. My dear friends, we send you forth to the sick and the homebound of our parish community, bearing the word of life and the body of Christ, together with the assurance of our love and concern. We pray that these gifts may strengthen our absent brothers and sisters and their communion with us through this journey of life to the Paschal Feast of the Kingdom. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our, rece our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have a couple of announcements. Um, the Divine Mercy Chaplet and Rosary will be prayed this Sunday at 3 p.m. to honor the day rather than next Sunday, and all are welcome. Um, also, there will be no daily Mass on Tuesday nor Friday because we'll have funeral Masses both days. On Tuesday, the Mass will be for Margaret Helfrich, and then on Friday, the funeral mass will be for Peter Lombardazzi. Um, Peter died about nine months ago, and of course, Margaret died on Easter Sunday. So all are welcome to come and pray and support the families during this time of grief. Um, this Wednesday, the 27th, we are having our annual kite flying event. That has turned out to be a, a great experience with food trucks and prizes from 6 p.m. until 7.30 p.m., That'll take place in the lower parking lot as well as on the St. Francis football field south of the church. So come to that if you can and you'll hopefully we'll have enough wind to get that kite in the air. I don't think we'll have to worry about that. And then um, on Thursday, May 5th, make plans after the 9 a.m. Mass to pray 
the scriptural rosary with our Parish Council of Catholic Women. All are invited to join in that prayer. And a special thanks again to those who have contributed to the annual Catholic Diocesan Appeal, formerly known as Care and Share. Thus far, 257 families have combined contributions of $112,003. So thank you again for your support of that appeal. I believe that's it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. As we go forth, let us sing number 444. Blessed be the Lord. Number 444. Four, four.